Hi, this is Vanessa and Tim. We are back with the latest Tazian news, and here they are. During his state visit, Ramosorta met with Frank Walter Stenmeyer, the president of Germany, for a bilateral meeting. Timorese President of Republic, Jose Ramos Horta, arrived in Berlin on Sunday, 25th of June 2023, around 7 a.m. local time, and greeted by Timor-Leste Honorary Councillor for Germany, Georges Camoens. The purpose of the visit was to fulfill the invitation of the President of the Federal of Germany, Frank Walter Steinmeier, in early 2023. Has been scheduled on June 26, 2023. Horta will hold a bilateral meeting with Frank Walter Steinmeier as well as with the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in Berlin. The focus of the meeting will be the regional condition and the global event and the renewal of the cooperation proposal between the two countries, where it will allow the easiest process of Timorese to work in Germany. Indonesia and Japan strengthening ties facing current global challenges. Indonesia's President Joko Widodo met Japan's Emperor Naruhito at the presidential palace in Bogor, West Java. During the latter's first official trip abroad, after his accession to the throne in 2019, Widodo remarked upon the two nations' friendship during a joint press statement, saying the Emperor's visit and friendship between Japan and Indonesia are essential in order to face the current global challenges. A strong foundation such as this is needed for the development of strategic partnerships between our countries in the future, particularly in the economic sector. Your Highness, it is essential to foster this friendship between the people, the nations of Japan and Indonesia, to face the current global challenges. This year marks the 50th year of relations between Japan and ASEAN and also the 65th year of relations between Japan and Indonesia. The emperor a week-long trip to Indonesia with his wife by invitation from the Indonesian government where he hopes to see further deepening of ties between Japan and ASEAN chair Indonesia. More than 100 people evacuated after fire in Busan Hotel. About 170 people were rescued or evacuated from a fire at the basement of a hotel building in Busan, South Korea. South Korea's Yonhap News Agency reported some of the hotel guests were rescued by helicopters and later trucks and 31 people were taken to hospitals due to smoke inhalation. According to the Busan Fire and Disaster Headquarters, the fire broke out in the hotel in Han Daegu, Busan at 9.34 a.m. The fire authorities said the fire was put out at 1.30 p.m. No deaths were reported. Fukushima residents worry on environmental damage caused by discharge of nuclear contaminated waste water. Local residents from Iwaki, the largest city in Japan's Fukushima prefecture, said they are seriously worried about the Japanese government's decision to push through the controversial plan for discharging the nuclear contaminated wastewater from the wrecked Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant into the sea, which they believe will exacerbate the impact on the environment and people. Iwaki residents said they believe that dumping the nuclear contaminated wastewater into the ocean will not only result in radioactive pollution and ecological disasters but also wreck the local fishermen's livelihoods. While Ishii Hideki, 64, owns a fish processing plant in Iwaki, said his plant was undergone many difficulties as excessive levels of radioactive elements were detected in fish off the Fukushima coast many times. He continued, the discharge will cause environmental damage and exert a negative impact on the image of Fukushima. The decision has triggered protests across Japan, as well as in neighboring South Korea, China, the Philippines, and Pacific Island countries. United Nations says ASEAN must hold Myanmar junta accountable to solve the crisis. <laughs> A United Nations expert said Southeast Asian neighbors of conflict riven Myanmar must consider imposing measures to hold its military rulers accountable and the bloc is deadlocked over how to resolve the ongoing crisis. It is time to consider alternative options to break what has become a deadly stalemate. ASEAN must consider measures 
to impose accountability on the junta for its grave human rights violations and its blatant disregard for the implementation of the five-point consensus, even if ASEAN remains deadlocked. And she said the ASEAN must not engage with Myanmar's military leaders as there had been no progress in implementing a five-point peace plan agreed between the bloc and the junta after it seized power in 2021 coup. The peace plan calls for an immediate halt in hostilities, safe humanitarian access, and inclusive dialogue to achieve peace in the strife-torn country. Chinese Foreign Minister expounds five-point consensus reached between China and United States. China and United States have reached a five-point consensus as visiting U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken wrapped up his trip in China. Director of the Department of North American and Oceanian Affairs of the Foreign Ministry, Yang Tao, unveiled a five-point consensus reached between China and United States when briefing the media on Blinken's visit. First, the two sides agreed to jointly implement the important consensus reached by the two heads of state at the Bali Summit, effectively manage differences and boost dialogue exchanges and cooperation. Second, the two sides agreed to maintain high-level exchanges. Third, the two sides agreed to keep moving forward consultation on the guiding principles of China and U.S. relations. Fourth, the two sides agreed to continue to advance the consultations through the joint working group in an effort to address specific issues in China-U.S. relations. Fifth, the two sides agreed to encourage more people-to-people -people and educational exchanges, have positive discussions on increasing passenger flights between the two countries, welcome more mutual visits by students, scholars and business people from each other's countries, and provide support and facilitation to this end. Victims seek justice for potential cancer related to Fukushima disaster. The victims of Fukushima disaster-linked cancers have a long way to go in seeking justice and taking the nuclear power plant operator and government to account. You know, when, when radioisotopes get inside living organisms or are external um, to the organisms, uh, that release of energy or release of matter in the forms of particles can cause damage inside of cells. In May 2022, the operator of Japan's disaster hit Fukushima nuclear power plant, Tokyo Electric Power Company, was sued by six people over claims that exposure to radiation after the meltdowns of Fukushima nuclear power plant caused them to develop thyroid cancer. On March 11, 2011, when a huge earthquake triggered tsunami led to one of the world's worst nuclear crises at the Fukushima plant, the plaintiffs, who were then aged between 6 and 16, were living in the Fukushima area. These plaintiffs were not alone in their suffering. Local doctors said at least 300 children were diagnosed with thyroid cancer and that the incidence rate of the disease is significantly higher than those in other regions. Thank you for watching today's episode, everyone. Have a lovely week that's ahead. We will see you soon.